In this Educate tutorial, we're going to address SASE deployment. In particular, we will look at Cisco's version of SASE with Cisco Umbrella. We will look at a sample SASE design consisting of several POPs, along with what each of these POPs may look like. We'll also have a quick look at CASB that SASE has to offer. Our SASE is not a one box solution and everyone will have different networking and security requirements. And I will offer some guidance on how to start a SASE project. The best place to start a SASE project is with SD-WAN and we will address this. Firstly, the SASE consists of POPs or data centers that are located around the globe. And in the case of Cisco SASE, they're around 32 of these and each of these POPs will be placed into a region and all of these POPs connect together to create what's known as a fabric and a fabric is nothing more than a mesh of connectivity. So we will have POPs because we want these networking and security services to be closer to the users. So if for example you're in Dublin you will want to get to a POP in Europe as opposed to the US. And each of these POPs will have both networking and security services and these will be delivered like a software as a service solution. There will be for example secure web gateway, a cloud access security broker and some kind of DNS filtering. So what I like about SASE and most of the vendors that offer a SASE product is that it allows you to turn on various services at the individual POPs. So one branch site may have all of the security services turned on and then another branch site we may only have DNS filtering turned on. So we know that security is about having layers of security control and this is known as a defense in depth approach. For example we may have a layer 7 firewall closer to the workloads and this will be one layer and then we can have a firewall at the perimeter and this could be another layer. You could have five or six layers running from the workload with endpoint controls right up until the network edge. And to be really honest, it's really difficult to do before. But with SASE, and in particular Cisco SASE, you can turn on each layer at each SASE pop that fits your exact security requirements. So Cisco SASE solution is based on Cisco Umbrella. And Cisco Umbrella is just one piece of the puzzle that makes up the SASE solution and it has a really good CASB offering. Cisco Umbrella CASB is used to discover your actual usage of cloud services through multiple means such as network monitoring, integration with existing gateways and monitoring tools and even monitoring DNS queries. So the CASB gives you visibility into your cloud services and there's a lot of shadow IT out there and your users could be using applications that you don't know about and this could be really harming your security posture. So the CASB is an excellent choice for discovering and then mapping this to a risk profile. The CASB can also map all your data flows for you and this can be done automatically. It can then assign a risk profile and you can have different policies that can be used assigned to different risks. Then it can enforce policies. So here you can have some type of micro segmentation. You can even block access or you can perform some form of identity security such as a number of different MFA challenges or even step up authentication. So you may be wondering how do you start a Cisco Umbrella CASB project? Well at the very first you need to know what you have. So first you need to discover sanctioned and unsanctioned cloud services and then assess the cloud risk based on cloud service categories. Once this information has been gained it can be measured along with the risk and it's all about risk tolerance. Some organizations can tolerate more risk than others. So once you know the application and you've given it a risk level then it can be compared to the organization's risk tolerance. So before we wrap up I just want to cover one critical point and this is how you connect to the SASE POPs and here we're going to look at SD-WAN which is a central element of SASE and you know that if you've got a branch site you can use SD-WAN 
to connect Cisco Umbrella. So SD-WAN brings a lot of intelligence and traffic engineering to connections and you can take full advantage of this when connecting to your SASE POP. For example, we can apply traffic engineering and also good security that SD-WAN has to offer. And this product is now mainstream, so it's a really good starting point for your SASE journey. So if I was going to start a SASE project, I would probably start with an SD-WAN deployment. It's been around a while now and the technology and features are pretty mature. I would then implement some of the SD-WAN security features. I would also look out to roll out Umbrella so I can combine all of these security functions into one place and then turn on these individual security functions as needed at each pop location. So Cisco has an effortless way to connect SD-WAN to Cisco Umbrella and this is done with IPsec tunnels and you are probably guessing correctly Cisco has a lot of optimizations and capabilities that you can use for these IPsec tunnels. So in this education tutorial, we addressed SASE deployment. In particular, we looked at how Cisco approaches SASE with Cisco Umbrella. We looked at a sample SASE design that consists of several POPs that are geographically located around the world, creating what's known as this SASE fabric. So SASE is not a one box solution and every one will have different networking and secured requirements. And here I offered some guidance on how to start a SASE project. And the best place to start a SASE project, in my opinion, is with SD-WAN.